Here's a quick look at Wilmington, Vermont. Welcome zombies. If you're somehow new to these videos, that would be a bit surprising. I don't think many people have heard of Wilmington, Vermont. I definitely hadn't. That's one of the great things about Airbnb. That's one of the ways, the main way, I've been able to get around to all these different places. Uh, well, I, I should say, what I've been doing is long-term Airbnbs, and I just look for good deals, places that I like, <clears throat> places you know that where the pictures look good, and places I haven't been. And then I get there, and that's when I just start to keep my eyes open and explore and see what I find. And in this case, I was staying in Reedsboro, Vermont, and Wilmington, Vermont is one of the just areas, uh, little towns that I came across just driving around exploring the area. And also, I was very close to Massachusetts. So while I was here in Vermont, I also jumped into what I guess would be uh, Western Massachusetts. You know, Boston's Eastern on the coast that I did get to Boston, but Eastern Massachusetts, where there was some amazing little towns there. So uh, that'll be the next state that I cover. And the one I just finished covering was New York. So, so far we've gone Ohio to New York now we're in Vermont, and the next place we'll go is Massachusetts, and we'll just continue and going from there. I'm currently right now in California, so there's a bunch of states in between the East Coast and coming back here to California. Lots, lots to uh, <laughs> a lot to cover, and uh, I hope you guys, I hope you zombies, stick around to see all those videos. Wilmington, Vermont today, and truthfully not a whole lot to be said or found as far as the history of this place goes and if you are new if you don't already know what the deal is here we're exploring remnants leftovers architectural remnants and leftovers of previous advanced prosperous civilizations here in these lands and i'm not talking cowboys and indians like we've been told i'm talking civilizations prior to that way prior to that and we still have some of their leftovers architectural leftovers and wow are they mind-blowing wow is it proof that they were much better builders they had much more knowledge they were they had better technologies better vehicles the whole the whole deal and in lots of cases what we're living in the shopping centers we're going to like a lot of it is repurposed leftovers a lot of bridges railroads all that sort of stuff so if you need to catch up, I recommend that you go back and watch these videos in order, starting with the oldest up into the newest. And just yesterday, I finished up the Albany, New York video. It's a long one, but I cover some very important things in that video. And just Albany, the architecture that's there is so mind blowing.
let's jump up into my blimp here and I'll show you Wilmington, Vermont. I've got that pin dropped right there. You see Vermont sits above Massachusetts, just to the east to the right of New York, and uh, to the right of Vermont, to the east of Vermont, is Maine. Just to kind of show you where we're at there. And then you can see right here's Albany. And so I actually passed through Albany on my way to stay for a while here in Vermont. And I chose Vermont because it was just a, a good spot, a good location to explore all these different little states right here. And so you see again, we've got another river, another canal right here. And I'll, I'll show you some really good proof of this today, but um, you know, like how maybe in pictures you've seen old ancient Venice, Italy with the canals and people moving on their boats with amazing architecture. Yeah, that's what America used to look like. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna see here is just remnants of that. Like if that those beautiful places in Italy were kind of like abandoned, decommissioned, and then covered up with a bunch of panels and white siding and, and stuff like that, then that's basically what we're looking at today. And I thought this was interesting. If we cruise on over here, you'll see that right here is the Wilmington Village Historic District, which is where we're going to be looking today. And I just thought it was interesting to note the icon that they give right there, which is a, a castle, like a piece of a castle. That's the icon that they're using to mark these places. And if you've watched any of my videos up until this point, you'll know that that's what we're looking at, is a bunch of old, old castle architecture. That's what America used to be. All, not just America, South America, North America, Canada, everywhere used to be just covered in castle architecture. And a lot of it buried, a lot of it destroyed nowadays. But I just think it's interesting that, you know, when we look at this village, they're gonna try and say it's just all wood cabin stuff and it's not, I'll show you how it's not. But then they also mark it with a little castle piece right there. And when I say white siding, you know, I just, that's what all these little panels are that have been thrown on these building, these white boards. Underneath that is rock, cement, ancient, very well built structure. And it's interesting because you can, you know, there's always the super old weathered chimneys. And oftentimes at the base, you can still kind of get a glimpse of what the whole thing might look like. But I just thought really cool building, ancient architecture. But as far as like information, that's again, not much to be said. I've got another one here in Newfane, Vermont, which is nearby. And just another building with a massive steeple on it, all covered in white siding. But this is not, not a wood building. So we're actually just gonna jump right into the footage and videos that I took when I was exploring Wilmington. Here's a little piece of the river, the canal. Very beautiful, very crystal clear water. And I'll show you another section of this river, of this canal, uh, where you can more clearly see like what I'm talking about, how you see over in Italy, that sort of thing. And then right over there, if you can see that green bridge, grit, that, ooh, that green bridge in the background there, I'm gonna walk across that with my dog and we're gonna go check out an old mill that's sitting over there. So here's the old mill. And as you can see, they've got a path you can walk with some signs along it to educate you on the real history of this place, right? Well, let's take a look at how fishy some of these signs are. So 45 Mill Street, I guess I'll give you a look at it real quick from the uh, airship, what I had marked over here originally for Wilmington. And here's just looking at it from an aerial view. And so this little path right here alongside the old river is what we're walking along. And typical, 
more than typical basically every single time let's talk about the fires that have happened at these historical sites and honestly the more yeah i think look i think the more i'm looking at this stuff i think there was fire and flood but i think they're trying to blame those fires and floods on mother nature when in lots of cases destruction like per intentional come in destruction set bombs off reroute dams to flood places i think malicious <laughs> planned things like that are what have destroyed lots of these places uh and they're just being you know blamed on mother nature and then other times i think like it's just made up for whatever reason but on this 9.5 acre site several factories were built one burned and others were modified to produce many different products it produced over half a million clothes pins per day, wooden bowls, plywood, broom handles, bread boxes, fruit boxes, ammo boxes, plywood, barn board siding, two wheel drive. Okay, that one's interesting. Two wheel drive motorcycles. And I'll show you those. They actually look kind of cool. Uh, and furniture. So, but it's basically just wood products, right? And so the first factories, 1915 to 1941, clothespin factory burned in 1915, was rebuilt in 1916, and uh, became a major employer of the region. The Hoot, Toot, and Whistle Railroad ran a spur line to the site, which hastened the factory's growth. So there was a railroad right here. That's one I haven't talked about much in these videos yet. Uh, but I also believe, I just believe it was pretty much all sitting here, guys. Uh, there was amazing architecture just sitting here. There were boats just sitting here. There was all sorts of other technology just sitting here. There were railroads sitting here and new populations just kind of showed up to, it showed up to all that and then had to figure out how to clean it all up, use it all, slash the conquerors that introduced the populations into these areas, obviously have uh, claimed a lot of that, hidden a lot of that uh, and you know, I think, I think we're, I th I think our cars, our power lines, our Wi-Fi is all just, they, they copped it back then, or at least pieces of it and figured some of it out and it just kind of fed it back to us. But I, the more I'm looking into stuff, like I think all this, all technology and much better technology was already around. And we're just working with little pieces of it that are frankly used to kind of control us or like I talked about this in my last video where power lines in lots of cases, I think there was, you can see this on plenty of these buildings where you know, the towers and the steeples, I don't believe that to be just aesthetics on the building. I believe just like how on top of our buildings, we throw up towers and poles for electricity and all that and Wi-Fi and routers. And I think they did that stuff back then. That's what the, all the stuff on top of their buildings is in lots of cases. And it was wireless, but now because Conquerors laid claim, introduced populations to clean everything up and work the land and make them more money or whatever. Like cables are running everywhere so that all electricity and energy can be measured for which we have to pay for. It's like, here's money you can use to pay for it. And actually, before we give you that money for doing a task for us, I'm gonna take 20 to 30% of that and then you can have the 50, 60, 70%. And then also when you go spend that to buy energy, from us, we're gonna just you know take uh, three to ten percent of that when you spend it, and so on and so forth. So we're just in this. There's ownership at the top of everything, and we it looks like we're just in this money loop, right? Of like, it doesn't even matter. Like even if you've got billions and billions, like there's still somebody who creates all those billions and billions, that prints those billions and billion billions or now is moving into digital billions but like there's someone providing creating that and so like how much any how rich or wealthy or how many dollars you have could be a ton of them like just remember there's someone that's creating that So there's the canal way that came through. There's the railroad that was sitting right here with amazing architecture. 
alongside of it. And I'll show you the canal way is decommissioned, the railroad decommissioned, like just an amazing, beautiful place with great transportation, great architecture, just all nothing now, just all just destroyed. And then the factory that was rebuilt in 1916 after a fire was sold in 1927 to a plywood, yeah, the plywood and production slowed during the Great Depression and then the flood and then a hurricane. And I, I don't know, again, this is where I'm like, maybe, but are those just, did, did demolition crews come through here and then they just called it a hurricane after the fact, now that we're a hundred years away from it. And this actually seemed kind of cool. Uh, it changed into this motorcycle, I guess we'll call it company, but it says the bike weighed 180 pounds and could float. So that's kind of cool, floating motorcycle. But also, you know, make sure you're wearing some board shorts or something when you're riding and going into the water. I don't know. But that's kind of cool, I guess. And then it turned into a barn board company. And here's another image they're giving us right here. And this is where I think, like, this is maybe what was closer to what was sitting here when new population was introduced to this area or something like that. And then now we're left with a couple of these structures. And then I guess it turned into a hardware store which went bankrupt in 95 and was auctioned for a third time and then someone else leased it and then demolished it in 2011 to 15 to make room for a new facility in the summer of 2015, exactly 100 years since the start of the site's first factory. So I don't know. Did mention this book right here the incredible history of the site is preserved in the company's book 45 mill street so i pulled up a pdf of the book and just wanted to look at some of the images see if there was anything just interesting to see i mean here's a look at a a train earlier on and again this is what i'm saying i'm they built these they built all this rock castle architecture and these extremely well built trains and tracks and canalways and steamboats and world fairs and expos and i just this was all sitting here left over from previous civilizations and in my albany video i talk a lot more about who those previous civilizations were and so again go that albany video has got a lot of information in there albany new york here's a look at it sitting right on the water i mean look yeah this is just big impressive sitting right on the water beautiful canal look at look at how beautiful these little waterfalls used to be that they had in pools of water here's another couple looks at it and it's kind of hard to tell because it's black and white but i think what we are looking at here is i think this is just a a big brick wall right here and i would imagine this is all brick or all stone just like the other factories we've looked at you can see the railroad track running right there and again i think i think that to me that looks like brick and stone on dirt roads and then we show up and we're the lumber people so that's why we start throwing around lumber everywhere and just starting to clean this up and and put it to a new use and here's a look at them hauling a bunch of lumber on rail cart and yeah i think uh that's accurate meaning we're lumber people and but we never see this with tons and tons of rock and brick and stone and marble and granite that would have been used to build all of the rock architecture we see they give us some pictures of lumber and stuff but never the heavy stuff i thought this was funny to see for that little floating motorcycle they use it as a firefighting system dog continued to walk past the mill there's this cool little boardwalk and just a really pretty hike honestly 
was still there's still a little bit of water over here on the side that's also nice but nothing i don't think it's anything compared to what it used to be back in the day and i'll talk a little bit more about this especially in as we go through more videos here in vermont but I believe there are uh, that uh, that right there pyramid in vermont and i'll show you some I don't know if I'll call it, I mean, it's interesting to see. I'll show you some little pyramids or maybe what's the top of much bigger pyramids here on this hike right now. But uh, yeah, the as I spent time in Vermont there, there's I'm pretty sure that's what we're looking at is just a bunch of pyramids that are just covered up in dirt and trees. But if you were to excavate all that away, I think that's what you'd find right there. Temples, pyramids, the type of stuff you know you, you see down in in mexico that sort of thing and i don't know if I, I yeah i don't know if the camera really picks it up here it's very obvious in person but I'm, what i'm trying to capture right here is how it kind of there's a glisten there's like a shine to these rocks right here and i think these rocks are just leftovers rocks that have tumbled or whatever from these old pyramids and I've read in a couple places where some of this old architecture, pyramids and temples, uh, that, uh, that sometimes they would crush up really fine glass into the cement or whatever type of stone they were using, making, and it would give like the buildings a really amazing shine to them. Like they would glisten. And that sounds so cool to me to see, by the way, like a, a full temple or pyramid of like say stone with glass in it and they could they'd also I've you know I've heard them using different colors of glass so it could like have like this you know if they use the blue it would have like a really shiny blue glisten to the building type of a thing but I just I was noticing that a lot of this rock was doing exactly that it had this shine and glisten to it and here's a look at the river which I believe used to be in much better shape much prettier but is still just absolutely stunning right now very gorgeous very very clear water surrounded by a lot of young young trees which we see all over the country we don't have really <laughs> it was a little hot out there for daryl but we just don't have a lot of old trees across the country uh, which kind of speaks to you know the destruction i think having happened across the whole country wiping out a lot of everything and because most of the trees across the country are maybe 150 years old, maybe. But like these, these are all babies. So like what happened, where are all the big trees? And that's what I'm saying. We're like, well, what's actually buried under these trees? Because these are new baby trees, new growth. And I think there was a, there's something under them. And there's just new growth now on top of it. And Daryl's never, we've never really swam a whole lot. We have a little bit, but as you can see right here, he's a little hesitant to go out there and get that first stick, a little too far out for him. So I threw another one, a little closer. He got a couple little doggy paddles in, brought it back. And then just a little ways more down and we see just a whole bunch of old remnants now, old rock, old concrete and these were the most interesting to me because these are are cut exactly like the pyramids are cut those couple back there and also there's there's a couple more actually too kind of forms like a square of them and this whole you know I, I again i think there's some sort of ancient building right here that's just been demolished that used to sit right on front on this beautiful waterway this is the old rock architecture, ancient people. And then here's our newer wood fences. Two, two different civilizations right there. The rock people and the wood people. And here's another look at these couple of pyramids. Yeah, I mean, uh, how deep do those actually go? How big are they actually? Has something been stripped off the top? But those are they're perfectly cut and just a lot of earth surrounding them now and then these rock piles were interesting i don't know what they are with this uh really old metal running through it but it looks like they've kind of turned these into like 
little fire pit type of things. And maybe they, you know, maybe they were built for that, I don't know. I didn't really know what to make of these, but they were interesting to look at. And then we came back here, got done with that hike over the little bridge here, and started to check out the uh, historic district right here. This little street that's just been boarded up to look like this. You know, we got the brown, the old barn siding right here, and then over here we got the white siding, and we'll see a lot more siding and paneling thrown on these buildings. But I'll also show you some proof of, I don't think that's what these are. Norton House, circa late 1700s, one of the oldest houses left in town, originally built on Lyle Hill in the first town of Wilmington. It was moved to its present site by Oxcart in the 1830s. Okay, this is something I'm not, I don't, I don't know what they're, they do this a lot where they say, uh, oh, it used to be over here, but then they moved it over here. And uh, one, I just don't think that's true because the, Okay, I was in a mission, I visited, which one was it? The uh, La Misión del Arc Ángel San Miguel, Archangel San Miguel in LA, in San Miguel, in like East LA. And one of the ladies was telling me the story about it. And she was like, yeah, they, it used to be like, whatever, a mile down the street, but then they moved it to here. And it's just straight up rock, you know, like Spanish mission rock home. And I asked her, I was like, how'd they, Okay, but how did they move it from there to here? Because they just had like wood carts back then, right? And she dodged me. <laughs> she just straight up started talking about something else. Or just, rep I don't remember exactly what she said, or repeated what she had already told me, I think is what she did. And I was just like, yeah, because you don't know. Nobody knows. Because there's no way that they could do that back then. And if you ever do find a story, it's like, oh yeah, brick for brick. They took each brick apart and then they moved it all over here on wood carts. It's like, you see how strong and durable these buildings are? How, you, how are they gonna un, un, like plaster each brick one by one and then move it? And they're doing it all on dirt roads. Why wouldn't they take those bricks and pave a road? Again, I just, I don't understand what the whole like moving from location to Kate location is about, but they're gonna try and say this is like a wood barn and that's, you know, and then they moved it from one spot to here. But look, this is, you're getting a glimpse of the street here. You can see this is all just paneling. It's all just disguise thrown up on top of old rock building. Look, I mean, you can see old rock walls, super short because they they're so buried. And then we've come and put rails on top of the old rock walls, so it actually makes sense height wise as a wall, some sort of barrier right there. And this this is the one. This is the Norton House, 1760, just making it look like a wood cabin when it's not. And then I'll give you a shot from across the street where it's easier to see the structure as a whole. But this is another, just to the side of it, it's part of the same building. This is the Lyman House, 1836, but look what's underneath it. Um, ancient rock structure. And so here's another one. They decided to go with baby blue this time instead of brown. <laughs> and look what it's sitting on top of. Even we we're even seeing a little brick right there. And here's a different building. You can see already right here, look how tall those windows are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're gonna build a, a wood cabin, but maintain the ancient triangle and pillars out front. And then you got this guy sitting right across the street, which is several stories with again, the ancient tri shaped triangle on top of it. It's just cause that's what these actually are. All that's happened here is they've thrown new disguise on the outside. Here's a good look at it from the front. If you just look down here at the bottom, you can see the original rock that's right there and the buried window shooting down. Take all these wood shingles off and you got an ancient structure right there. And this huge building right here, which they're gonna say is wood. No, it ain't. They call this, I guess, the Memorial Hall, giving it the date 1902. Nope, sorry, I, the one we were already looking at, I guess, is the Memorial Hall where I was showing you the windows and the rock down here. That's, that's the real building right there. This is the Crafts Inn, 1898. 
very big building. I think if I'm not mistaken, that piece right there, the top where it's kind of going like that is similar to, I think Canada Jahari, where there was that gray church and then across the colorful castle, which is just an old people home. And then you can see again, remnants of more rock stacking back there. And then you start to see some old towers that are still around, but again, with the white siding. And then right here, we're on the side of that Crafts Inn. And this is where you start to see the old canal with the old rock wall for the canal. Um, and it, you know, it looks like there's the original rock stacking and then it looks like it was covered with cement. And you can see right there across the street, you know, uh, <laughs> the bottom half of that building is the ancient cement. And then the top half, they've just thrown yellow paneling over. This bridge right up here, old, ancient, we didn't build that. And this is where you really get a, a good look at the old ancient canal way right here with the buildings sitting on the side of it. This is what I'm talking about. Like this is, you know, the beautiful ancient waterways in Italy with the amazing architecture on the side of them. This is that just completely out of use, demolished. Lots of the original architecture missing. But you can still see the walls and you, you know, there's a little bit of water in there but and then that across from it is where we do get to see okay this one's exposed <laughs> whatever was on here has been stripped off and we do get to see just the amazing brickwork that's still left right there and then this is down the street you know instead of there's just to the left of the canal if we were to walk this is that you know yellow uh, sided house that i pointed out and then it's got this big church down here which we'll go take a look at you can see at the bottom, it's all brick. Look how tall these windows are. There's the ancient triangle. Here's the tower, whatever. I, I think uh, in lots of these, like I just saw one here in California. It's not exactly this, but it's like a clock. Like I think they call them clock towers, which uh, I feel like in some cases we've just replaced them with a clock now. And there used to be, they used to, be uh, just different there was it was different technology back then and now we just throw a, a clock in there maybe and i think you know up here was maybe a bell tower and then we've just kind of covered those up but you can see this thing's just in disrepair and i think it's actually for sale right now if i'm not mistaken the valley town church i might be mistaken on that one though oh no no, no. yeah it is for sale down there at the bottom you can see and that's a ca the case with a lot of these because they're big buildings to power them to operate them uh, you got to have some dough for sure to do that. Yeah, you can definitely get a good look at the brick. And I imagine this whole building's brick. Just beautiful stained glass under there. Like the, that, that intricate and beautiful of stained glass is just, it's a disgrace to slap this old, like to, to give it this white siding look and basically try and call it a barn. And this is, these are the windows from the side. Really, really amazing windows super tall multiple stories tall with this guy right off to the side with beautiful brick beautiful sandstone pillars windows straight into the ground and then here's a here's a look at that church again from the side you can see just the different rock work going on on the bottom of it it looks like i don't know maybe it's been touched up repaired a little bit there on the bottom but yeah here you can look how like colorful those windows are really cool and then here's that brick building again from the side uh, you can see right here bottom left got that old bridge work with this beautiful perfectly stacked brick building it had this really interesting window and then if you look at the top of it here 
you can see uh, it's got like that ribbon decoration on some of these squares and then some of the other squares are just blank but that's just ancient ancient decor on building right there found another building with beautiful windows some of that same symbolism we've seen in all these other buildings all these other rock buildings script you know books of scripture crowns yeah you can see the rock there underneath it and just <laughs> yellow siding thrown on top this is i guess the masonic social lodge and then from the side here again just some more rock underneath it this is a different one this one looks you know the, the siding on this one is a lot more well kept but again on the bottom like this tower right here it's it's the same tower we've seen on all these other buildings and you see the the truth of it down here at the bottom rock and brick i believe there's an arch right over here beautiful super super tall stained glass windows here's a look at the tower on it from behind so i guess that's just a window right there or at least it is now maybe it was open to let air through previously i don't know and i took a quick peek under it in another spot where you can see that yep it's just <laughs> it's a it's a big rock boy here's a look at it from the front pretty cool looking but i do wish they all right yeah so down here at the bottom you can see uh, i'd say some brick looks like brick uh they've painted over it and then up here they've put siding over it but then right there you can see an art uh an arch just going <laughs> straight down into the ground and what do you know we've got wood stairs leading us up to this door which very likely just a window previously Another one just in disrepair, boarded up. And you can see right underneath it here. There's look how big those stones are. Those are some big stones. And that's what this whole building is. And then this was really interesting that this had this building had flood levels marked on them. So the 2011 and the 1938 flood levels. But if we look at the uh, size of these buildings, right? Like, I, I'm sure I believe it was flooded up to that point but there's so much more of these buildings buried these buildings are much 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 taller this is just the tippity tops of them one thing you know this is definitely something i've thought about don't know if it's occurred to you or not but if that's the case if this is just the tippity tippity tops then what's the deal with the canal being all the way up here and yeah that is the deal i think they had waterways running way high up in the air you know that's what they built cement canals all the way way up there at the tops of you know and all the levels of their castle kingdoms and could use water and tr uh, all just canals and water transportation systems all the way up at the tops we think of it just as like the bottoms because we don't engineer water in that way really where we've got like really really tall buildings and structures or like full cities built up as fortresses and then we've got to worry about water at the top like we don't we just do everything as simple and cheap as possible basically on the ground and like even the canals the amazing canal ways that are still sitting around everywhere we still right now don't even use and it's not because it's not efficient it's not because it's not beautiful it's not because it's a bad idea to have water running through your cities it's f honestly for quite the opposite of all that why they're all decommissioned and why we're not engineering water like that and then there was this really cool building down here with a with a tower and a steeple on top of it here's a look at the front of that building and here's the old red mill inn as they call it very big long structure sitting next to this guy yep and on the side of this one you can see down at the bottom again just rock work that they've painted maroon and then white siding on the rest of it those rock pyramid finds were very interesting 
I had a couple more shots of it that I wanted to share. I'm so mad that this happened. I don't use Seagate hard drives, in my opinion now, <laughs> at least with MacBooks or whatever, or with, yeah, because uh, like 20% of, like I didn't look, I just dumped everything on it and then looked like a couple months later or whatever, and plenty of the files are corrupt and I've tested it back and forth and got new hard drives and it's just the Seagate hard drives are not like 20% of everything that I dump on them is just corrupted. So that's a big shame because there were a couple other shots. So there were like those two main pyramids and then there was like a, an old rock that sat in front of like a old rock square. And then at the back of that square, there were two more of those little pyramids, which I probably aren't actually that little if we were actually able to see everything buried. But anyways, regardless, sorry, I don't have those shots, wish I did, but just seeing what we were able to see in my opinion, that, that was my favorite find. Uh, it was cool to see the main street, and obviously that's all rock architecture, which is really amazing. It's all on the National Historical Register, etc. But going on that little hike and then finding those very old rock remnants, perfectly cut pyramid shapes, I think there's a lot more story there.